What's up everybody, Paul with Pro Shop here and today we have a real treat for you. We are going through a tour of Visser Precision, an amazing machine shop here in very bright and sunny Denver, Colorado. And I tell you, I'm from the Northwest, it's springtime, I don't think I've seen the sun for months. So I got my shades on and before I burn to a crisp, let's go get inside and meet Jack Kerr, the president. All right, well Jack, thank you for letting us come and tour the shop. I know you have an amazing facility. I know people are gonna be very excited to see what you guys do here, but uh, Let's start by uh, just sharing a little bit about the company. Yeah, uh, we're Vista Precision. We've been around since 2010, uh, primarily an aerospace manufacturer where we're doing uh, contract manufacturing for both additive and machining services, precision machining, five axis machining, complex stuff. The stuff that nobody else wants to do, that's what we typically sign up for. Awesome, and yeah. you also some specialize in additive and then subtractive that's to right. the parts. That's right. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's, that's cutting edge stuff, so let's excited to see it. Let's All go right. check it out. All right, yeah, where are we here? So this is our additive area, right, where we're doing all of our additive manufacturing. And really, this is where our additive journey began. We've had our 280 back there since 2013, so we've been printing now for about 11 years. Okay. So we, I feel like we we're one of the first to really start to that's adopt a, this technology. That's early. And what alloys and, uh, are you printing in these machines? Primarily aluminum, nickel-based alloys, and titanium, and stainless. Okay, and you have how many machines total additive? Nine metal additive platforms currently. That's, yeah. a, that's quite a Some number. Some single lasers, multi-laser machines. You know, they all do different things, different build volumes, but all and in what all, is the sort of the newest, best, biggest that oh, you have? The biggest platform we have right now is an M404 by EOS, okay. which is a four laser machine that has about a 16 inch volume. Nice. Cubically, yeah. You can do some pretty good sized parts in that's that. That's right, yeah. All right, yeah. cool. Well, let's keep going. Cool. Let's see the rest of the shop. This is all your powder. That's right, powder management. Do you do uh, do you do powder management in Pro Shop? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, we probably need to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you could probably talk about that. Yeah. I know there's some uh, ways that some clients are doing that. Okay. So these are still the additive. This is additive. Yep. So okay. these are the 404s. Yeah, you got to stand up on the platform to look inside of it. What's it doing? It's uh, laying down another layer of powder and then printing about 20 micron layers at a time. And then it so, uses laser to center. Yeah, there's four lasers in that machine there. So one in each quadrant and yeah. it just it grows the part from the bottom up. Yeah. So cool. And then you'll yeah. finish machine it, obviously. It will wire it off the plate. These parts here don't require any post machining. We'll just wire them off and ship them. Wire EDM them wire off, EDM off, the, the, build off plate. the build plate. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. New terms with additive that, yeah. <laughs> that uh, I'm learning. This is our newest printer. It's actually being set up right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's, what's unique about this one? This is an SLM 500 German okay. machine. We're setting it up with aluminum ALSI 10 MG for production. So this machine you can see has some ancillary compartments and activities that are happening to the side here. Oh, it's like the whole thing. That's right. So wow. you can process the, the build outside of the machine so that your uptime is, is a lot okay. better as opposed to having to tear down and the whole machine. And is that a setup to vacuum off some of the That's extra right. powder? That's right, in an inert environment. Very cool. Wow, I like it. And I yeah. noticed this gentleman over here, he's running Pro he's Shop running right pro now. Shop. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, Doing a pro shop tour right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess uh, Garrett, what we are you doing in pro shop right that. now? I promise uh, we didn't stage that. Do our machine checks. Ah, yeah, the equipment module doing equipment calibration and preventative maintenance stuff, right? Yep, that's right. Awesome. Yep. Very cool. I love it. All right. And there's a fairly big looking machine at the end of this room. Yeah. It looks like you got a pair of them. That's right. These are Velo 3D machines. We run Inconel 718 in these. They both have two lasers. Wow. And uh, they have unique recoding technology, or it's a vacuum recoder, so it doesn't touch the part. Okay. Whereas traditional additive, you have a recoder blade coming across the part every layer. Okay. Um, this eliminates a lot of recoder contact, which causes build failures sometimes. Okay. So it's a more reliable process. More reliable process. And is yeah. it unique to doing Inconel and, and nickel base? It also, they, you can set it up with aluminum as well, but it's a closed system. So you kind of got to pick your alloy and, got it. and run with it. with it. Yeah. Okay. 
Very cool. And here we are in the machine and shop. And then we moved to subtractive. Subtractive, that's right. Yeah. That's the, the, using the right terms. <laughs> and so it looks like we got lathes maybe Lays. on this We end. step into the lathe area. Yeah. Um, I do have some tailstock lathes on the other side for a little bit more short run prototype work. This is a little bit more production oriented. Yeah. But uh, so these are subspindle lathes, y-axis, live tooling. And you got a mix, got some Doosans, got a Mori, BMG, got a Nakamura, Nakamura. Twin turret, twin spindle machine. Yeah, those are amazing. Yeah. Very cool. And then some wire machines. Yeah, that's right. Two Makino wires for precision wire work, as well as an HB600 wire, which uh, re-spools the wire. And so okay. and it, it moves a lot faster than and the And is this also cutting parts off? That's oh, yeah. right. Is this the parts we just That's saw? That's right, yep. So these are an automotive application. That's right. Okay, so these are basically stuck to this plate, but you're just gonna trim them we're off. We're gonna wire them right off the plate and we're gonna ship them out. Wow. Yeah, so this machine, this wire is basically a glorified bandsaw. <laughs> okay, yeah. we'll call it what it is. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Now, how come some of these have a double wall? Are they actually just nesting inside or are they actually connected? I believe they're connected. Oh, wow. And that's, that's the beauty of additive is you can build things right. and you consolidate do. parts and make them more monolithic, um, which just opens up a lot of design possibilities. Okay. So is this some kind of intake? That's right. Yeah. Componentry? Motorsports. Yeah. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the application, but it is some kind of intake or muffler component. Nice. And you have a nice ROA pallet tool yep. here on this Makino. That's right. Uh, we don't run this machine a lot, but we, when we do, it can automate electrode. Uh, okay. That's what it's primarily electrodes. for. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Running that's graphite sick. in this machine here. Got it. Um, for our sinker. Yeah. Good vacuum system on it. Nice. And you guys, have, you guys invest in nice equipment. Yeah. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like I said, we're growing into this investment, right? We have a, if you build it, they will come mentality. It's uh -huh. a growth company. And I knew that I needed an ERP that could support this kind of workflow, right? right. And this level of scale. And uh, yeah, Pro Shop just dovetailed right into exactly what we were trying to do. Awesome. You have some Swiss over yeah. here. Swiss screw machines, yeah. Yeah, very nice. All with Edge Technologies bar feeders and then some, uh, some, some verticals over here. That's right. How do you like these TriMiss systems? They're okay. Hit or miss. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. So what do we got over here? So this is amorphous metal casting. This is really the technology oh, okay. that Visser Precision was founded on and, and really it. tried to, to get off the ground. We're now one of only maybe three or four people in the world that can do this technology. And so we make planetary gears for space applications, luxury goods for companies in Europe, okay. um, for very niche applications, but uh, highly profitable. Wow. Uh, from space to high-end uh, That's right. High-end fashion. Yeah. Amazing. We have uh, so are those is it like a low to medium volume kind of process? Uh, the the goal is high volume. The the okay. development that goes into these types of projects for low volume it just doesn't make sense. Got it. So we're, how do we find those commercially viable products that is the material's not cheap? Right. right. Where does this make sense? Where are the benefits of this material? So is it a little really bit like an injection themselves. molding process, but it's with metal? That's right. And what kind of metals? Just so maybe it's someone listening. Uh, yeah, it's a bulk metallic glass, zirconium based alloy. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it has really high modulus okay. uh, like elasticity. Yep. Yeah. Uh, really unique properties within right. itself, right? Huh. Um, does not expand or creep under extreme temperatures. Um, see why the space application which is why the space applications exactly right. so strain wave gears planetary gears perfect applications for this type of process all right yeah learn something new every day yeah all right and uh looks like some water jets over in the corner couple water jets smaller format water jets to support that... the casting effort really okay. for uh, you know cutting ingots to, to length and then degating rings all right and yeah, things nice. like that yeah, a wide variety, yeah. more verticals. And uh, so I've seen some, just a few computer stations here and there. So you have kind of your pro shop stations kind of distributed throughout. That's right, yeah. A lot of the guys on the floor can program and so they all have individual computers. And so they're able to access pro shop in real time as they're working on their parts. Got it, okay. 
Palace of Billet everywhere. Palace of Billet. So clearly an aerospace application. That's right. That's right. right. Now the machines are getting bigger. That's right. So, so. larger format, five axis machines, 12 pallet pool station. That's a 12 pallet for a 125 yeah. monoblock. Yeah. Or duo block. Duo block. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that is, uh, that's, that is massive. <laughs> you want to know what kind of concrete you had to put under that? Exactly. Or? Exactly. So we have three 125s. Have One of the 125s has the FD option for turning. Yeah. Okay. So the this one has the pallets, the others are standalone. This has a pallet, one pallet, not okay. a pallet pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other one is a standalone. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And some Mazak five axis too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Yeah. We can't film the parts themselves because they're ITAR controlled, unfortunately, but uh, trust me, they're really cool looking. <laughs> um, and so yeah, some more, some more, more DMUs. Yeah, we can uh, more take Dusons. a turn if you want. Yeah, we can come this way. I love the triple monitor setup here. Yeah. So, uh, so these are these guys are programming and setting up their own machines. That's right. And, That's right. Okay. Yeah. Now, are they um, setting up production jobs, or do you have like, like a like a separate value stream for? That's short -term separate work? value stream. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we did that at our shop. We had yeah. guys that were dedicated to prototype, quick turn, right. small volume. They had their programming stations right in front of the machine. Exactly. It's such an optimal way to go. Yeah. Trying to do one-off parts, hard parts in a, from a programming office just doesn't make a lot of sense. I've tried it and it's usually not effective. And what are you guys using for programming? Mastercam. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very good. Good partner of ours. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, more double, triple with the vertical monitor. I love it. Yeah, it was uh, one of our uh, Australian customers. We got a picture and they, one of their stations had a double wide and then the vertical yeah. for doing yeah. in process checks or whatever it might be. Um, nice to have that set up. Absolutely. Everything's digital now, right? Absolutely. I mean, gotta... No travelers. So more, uh, yeah, just combination of Mori's, so really Mori, Mazak, and, and, and Doosan. Doosan. There's really That's the, the lion's share. Yeah. And That's then right. the Makino's over in the yep. EDM and yes. wire. Okay. And some more uh, multi-pallet set systems here, but smaller scale, obviously. These parts are not ITAR controlled over here. Okay. So we can see these. Oh yeah, that looks like an automotive or yeah. application. You can get in there if you want. That is a cool looking A-arm. Very cool. You know what kind of vehicle? I do. It's, uh, it's a motorsport application. All right. Yeah. We'll leave they it at they that. go around in circles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> on pavement or on dirt? <laughs> <laughs> on pavement. On pavement. Yeah. Okay. And then that has a, what, a, like a dozen pallets? That's right. On it as well. Yeah. Lang work holding. Nice. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Nothing but good stuff here. Wow, and then a whole bunch of uh, a bunch of horizontals, NH, a yeah. bunch of horizontals, yeah. Yeah, you have a lot of machines; they're just everywhere. Oh, I like that fixturing with the multiple uh, multiple three jaws on, yeah. The, on yeah. the tombstones. And we had a different job running in this just a few weeks ago, and the way that we've kind of designed our fixturing to be modular made this setup super easy and seamless. Right, it's basically plug and play within a day. Sure. Oh. And uh, so, you know, maybe it's a little quiet over in this corner, so it's a good time to chat mm -hmm. a little bit. How how has ProShop been beneficial compared to your, your last system? It just gives us so much more visibility to the workflow. Okay. You know, um, more user friendly. The guys understand it better. Right. Right. Um, it's got a user interface that they're more familiar with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know we haven't been using ProShop all that long, maybe about a just over a year. Okay. And I feel like we still haven't mined all of its functionality. We just keep sure. pulling back layer after layer, and we're like, right. oh my gosh, there's so much here that we can do with this system. Sure. Right. And we're really trying to make a concerted effort to get that kind of trajectory of uh, adoption, you know, accelerated because sure. we're like we're missing out. Right. so much value or we're leaving money on the table right because we're not letting pro shop do what it was designed to do and give us the data that we need to make better decisions sure right and so there's still a few more machines here uh 
Yeah, we can walk into the CMM area. Yeah, I love the quality policy up on the yeah. wall. So there's an ITAR <laughs> part on the CMM. We yeah. can't film that. But you have uh, a couple of beautiful Zeiss mm -hmm. uh, machines. Very nice. Uh, and what are you using for programming? Calypso. Calypso. That's yeah. what we use at our shop, yeah. too, for yeah. our Zeisses. Yeah, climate controlled. Yep. Uh, obviously. And do equipment calibration in here. Yeah, that's right. Change calibration. Yeah. Okay, very yeah. good. And then probably beyond us is like planning, engineering, programming. Planning. Engineering, planning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we go check that yeah, out real quick? Yeah, of course. <laughs> a lot of our staff here ends up on the floor quite a bit, so it can be sure. hit or miss about who's actually in the office, right? Got it. So everybody's pitching in in some way, shape, or form, wearing yeah. lots of different hats. Got a lot of projects on yeah. the go. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you guys have a little bit of a, uh, a NASCAR background. Um, just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, our NASCAR background, uh, the owner back in about 2006 decided uh, he's an ambitious guy and he's like, why can't I start a NASCAR team out in Denver, even though there's absolutely no talent or support in Denver. It's all in and, North Carolina. Uh, that's right. He's like, but I'm going to do it anyways. And okay. he just built it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. uh, and just over time, got a little bit better and a little bit better. Yeah. And uh, I believe it was 2017, we actually won the championship. Wow, so, very cool. Yeah, over that, you know, what? 11 year 11 period. 11-year period, uh -huh. going from basically zero infrastructure in the area, being able to build a team that was good enough to, to take it all the way to the top. It's pretty impressive. And that's one of the reasons you got into precision manufacturing, precision that's right. machining. That's yeah. right, it was because of that, to support our NASCAR team effort. Okay. Yeah. And they are making parts that go on rockets and satellites right. and yep. all over. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, is there more you think we should look at or is this? This is really it. Okay. Yeah. Well, we saw, we went, we walked past 50 machines or so. Yeah. Um, really impressive facility. Um, thank you so much for being a customer. So glad uh, it's making an impact here. It's making an impact. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks for opening your doors to, uh, to the world. Yeah, Appreciate absolutely. It. All right, Jack. Thanks, Paul. Thanks so much.